I ask because the I'm not going to go over and over again, okay? We've been sitting here for 20 minutes, and I've explained to you the background of your case. You have two TPO violations, okay? Albeit that they were not threatening and not menacing, they are technical violations, okay? You asked that you said you need to see where you're going to be in the court. I'm pointing over to where the witness is. You won't look. Pointing over to where the prosecutor sits. You won't look. Pointing over to where we're going to sit. You won't look. I've already told you that the jury sits in the box that's over there. Okay? I've explained to you several times the ins and outs of the case. Okay? I support you in that you didn't, I don't think you did anything wrong in terms of threatening anybody. But that doesn't mean that you didn't technically violate the protection order that you agreed to. So that kind of box is your option today, okay? So that's kind of where we are right now. I feel for you that you've got issues with the kid, but they can't be resolved here. This is just a mister. This is a municipal court to handle misdemeanors, traffic, and criminal cases. That's all they do. <coughs> they can't take into consideration anything that's happened in another court in relation to your guilt or innocence of these charges. I've also told you that the judge has indicated that if you are found guilty, He's not really going to do anything but other than put you on probably non-reporting probation because you've done such a good job while this case is pending and you've not had any incidents. So that's really the whole nutshell. Not trying to be impatient with you, buddy, but I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Okay? Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah that's, the, that's the thing. It's like what you're talking about is fine, but it's not really... It's not helping me figure out the questions I need to ask. <laughs> Well, I don't know what to do. So. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. I just, I'm okay. not trying to argue with you, and that's why I, I, I want I to record that. that's this. That's why I'm explaining it to you, buddy. And here's yeah. the thing. I can't help, I can't help that you were at a disadvantage when you're in a domestic relations court. That does happen, and what can happen is decisions can go down that are one-sided against you, okay? But that's why you have to have representation sometimes, okay? So here's the thing. Call me tomorrow afternoon. Okay, and I'll let you know what the status is for next Wednesday. Yeah, dude, I support you. I just and, and I'm not and I'm not giving you a hard time, but I can only do so much, and what they're gonna listen to here is only so far. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just. It's tough. I get it. It's, it's tough. It's more than just tough. When this all started, I was confused and trying to figure it out, and as time went on, I started to figure things out. And Kelly got really angry that I wanted to have the kids tested. And um, that's why she started trying to get the kids from her. And um, what I recommend, okay, yeah. is if you, have, if you have the funds. I don't have any funds. Okay, well that's the tough part. Because you probably do need to see an attorney about your custody issue. Okay? Because yeah, well, you probably are at a disadvantage. It's not just that I'm at a disadvantage. It's that the that Judge Kirby clearly showed bias, and he is in charge of the magistrates. I can't help that, buddy. I know you can't help that, but that's what I'm trying to get to. That is that that's my starting point for making decisions for this trial and trying to figure out what I'm doing. But that's that, that that isn't for me. Okay, because the gist of what this trial is is the simple facts, as I told you. Okay. okay. And did you violate or did you not? That's all that is really involved here. Okay. The, it, we, it, even if we wanted to, we can't get those other things in. All right. So call me tomorrow afternoon. Okay. And you'll be able to listen to our conversation again later. That's why I want to. That, okay. That's why I see. That'll help you.
office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Yeah, one second. Thank you. Mr. Hi, Mr. Elter. This is Brian Benneke. Hey, Brian. How are you, man? Um, you know, I've been better. Yeah. Well, we've got our trial coming up. Yes. We're supposed to have a free trial tomorrow. Okay. And the, and the judge just called for it today. He wanted to have a final free trial. Now, here's the thing, buddy. Okay. Uh huh. It, as I've mentioned many times that if you're found guilty, judge isn't going to do anything to you because of everything that's been going on. He understands the facts of the case, okay? Um, he knows He knows everything that's going on, okay? So that uh, you don't have to really worry, if you will, about what's going to happen. But I still can't get him to come off the violation of TPL, man. You know? So... While you have the thing where you're looking at technical violations, I think we, I think we stick to our guns. I think you stick to your guns, man. Okay. Oh no, now, I am sticking to my guns, honestly. You know, we haven't talked good. in quite a okay. while. Um, yeah. So I didn't know. I wanted to hear what the update was from your end. Nothing. They're sticking. They're not. They're not given. Oh no, that's they're fine. I mean, you know, it's you really. Know? It is their choice. I. I have to laugh because, you know, this last year I've been preparing for this a lot and doing a lot of research and trying to decide the right way to go. And I... Well, come down tomorrow, okay? Come to the pre-chow tomorrow. What All time right? is I'll it? I'll be there about 2, two o'clock. What's that? It's at 2 o'clock tomorrow? Yeah, they they just called me about an hour ago, Brian, so you wouldn't know about it. It's not yeah. something you missed. It's just that the judge said, hey, have Nate come down tomorrow if you can. Okay? Right. Well, so I'm, I'm supposed to be there, but why don't you show up if you can? Yeah, oh, I'm going to try. I have work. I'll have to see if I can get the day or the, sure, yeah. the time. All right, and if you have work, then don't, don't, if you can make it, okay. If you can't, I'll call you afterwards. Yeah, All right? but I did, I wanted to talk to you about one thing before I go. If I... Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about how to handle things, and, yeah. you know, I've explained to you my situation and how I was treated in the civil court, and specifically Judge Kirby um, violating my uh, due process rights and violating my right to be able to represent myself appropriately in the uh, TPO or the, the third <laughs> TPO right. hearing right. that I had. I mean, that's the other thing, is this is my third one. The first two, the first one, Kelly dropped on her own account because she realized that the things that she was saying were so egregious that I think she realized that it wouldn't even hold up. The second one, she told was told by the uh, magistrate that she had no standing. And the third one, she brought in those doctor text messages and got me emotional I can't even remember half of that trial and right. after right. Kirby's uh, statement to me at the beginning that he assumes that men in my position choose not to work out of spite and the fact that you know I <laughs> I have been doing all of this for my kids and that's what you can tell the judge is that I'm not saying I'm not signing that sheet of paper because I know that Kelly is waiting to pounce to try to curtail my rights even more, and my children have been asking me to get custody of them so that they can move in with me because of what she's doing to them. So, right. my position is I'm not signing anything that admits guilt. I'm definitely not gotcha. going to sit back and let them treat me this way and you can tell the judge now that I filed now, I hear you, but don't 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 mix Lebanon with Judge Kirby. I'm not. You know, what I'm saying is this but I that understand why you don't right. you're you're not yeah, letting me I finish. I'm sorry, I haven't made my point. My okay. point is yeah, that after all of that, then I went in front of this judge for my eviction hearing at which 
I didn't even have the ability to tell him this. My fucking mom told him that I was being tested for Asperger's and he was dismissive of it. Didn't give me the ability to speak for myself or have any say in his courtroom. And now this, this trial, they're trying to hit me for a second violation, a felony violation. When if you, and I hope you have been doing your homework because I'm really worried about it. The second violation that they're claiming is specifically for the required disclosure for my divorce hearing. The paperwork when I didn't have a lawyer that if I didn't send to Kelly, I would have gotten in trouble with the judge if I had tried to talk about it. That's the second violation. The picture of his car, it was in my divorce paperwork because my friend took that picture while I was in jail. I didn't know he took the picture. I found out after I got out. And I was like, well, she has a guy living with her while we're not divorced, and all of this mess is going on. And my kids did not like it. And then Judge Kirby allowed that man to stalk me in town, and the police knew about it. I have recordings of the police officers and him doing it to me. So my point is this. I'm going to sue. And I haven't even told you everything that has happened. I have documentation of all of this, so my offer to the, to the town is this. I will sign paperwork stating that I will not bring suit in civil court if they drop both of these and drop the... They're the, not going to do that, though. They're I don't care. Do that. That's my offer. I mean, because... Okay. Well, I'm just not going to do that. That's so fine. That but offer. I also I want to talk to you because I'm upset because in doing research, I found out exactly what my position is vis-a-vis uh, -vis you and the court and the fact that um, I don't feel right about any of this. I don't feel right about the way any of this has gone. I don't feel right about the fact that I have been begging and telling them about all of my issues from the very beginning and have been extremely honest about what it is that's going on with me and why these things happen. And in this time, the judge in front of you told me not to show up to a pretrial that he then slapped a, a bench warrant on me for not a, appearing at. So I am done with people treating me like crap. And this is what I would say to the judge. And this is what I am going to end up saying to the judge is that the things that he has done and said may not be able to be used against him personally in law, but they can definitely be used against him in the court of public opinion. And I do know that I have a, a standing to sue for civil damages against the court system for what they did to me. So I'm willing to sign that because I don't want to put my fucking kids through this. I have to, I have to get my kids today and I don't see them again until the trial. So the judge has put me in this position where... I am sick and tired of people treating me like shit just because I can't talk to people. Just because it takes me forever to be able to understand what people are saying to me and what's going on in a public situation. So I'm not going to lie, this trial is going to be interesting because I can't do the whole, oh, sit up at the front bench and look at everyone and put up with all that bullshit. So my plan is to sit at that front bench and close my eyes. Because if they want me to talk about everything and be able to express it, I'm going to need time and I'm going to need people not putting their faces in front of me. Because people's faces scare the hell out of well, me. I, I hear what you're saying, man. But yeah. If you're going to tell your story, you're going to have to do that. And that's you're fine. I'm. <laughs> this is what's happening right now. I'm telling my story and I'm putting it online. And I am filing an ADA complaint. And the judge can deal with the fact that whatever he does, whatever he decides to do, is going to bring more attention to him and to this town and what's going on. So if he wants that, if he wants more attention on him and he wants to explain all of the things that I have seen and the things that have happened to me, including from his own court and the people on his bench in his court, he may want to think about that. Because the, the, okay. at the end of the day, people I, I, aren't going I'll... to just protect him. So... I am sick and tired of being hurt. My kids are being put in, at risk because of this. I mean, that's really what it comes down to, is that if I 
keep allowing people to convince me to do things because they scare me, I'm going to keep hurting my kids. If well, I stand I'm not up... i convince you to do anything. What? I've told you from day one that I've not tried to convince you to do anything. I don't know. Um, I don't know I'm, about that. You know, you say that, but that's what I mean. I... I don't, well, then I don't know what you're talking about, Brian, because I have not tried to convince you, and I've told you day, since day one. Yeah, exactly. That, 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 but from day one, I've been trying to explain to you that, that that I can't tell. You know, you you, you don't understand what it's you know like to I not be able to tell you, the honesty yeah. of other people. Okay? And that's why I... I don't know what you want me to do, Brian. I want you to just, you know, do what you keep you have been doing, being aware of what's going on, and talk to the okay. judge as much as you can. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you down at all. I am expressing no, my no. fear and emotions and explaining to you where I'm at and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, you know, I, okay. I understand that I might not be the best uh, or the, I might not be making you the most sense out. right now. I've always, understood, I've always understood what you've been saying, buddy. Well, I feel like okay. people say that, but and then their responses show me that they really didn't. Because I am cogent, and I am, uh, you know, I have a good vocabulary, but when it comes to communicating with people, there's more than just the words, you know? There's the idea behind the words. Well, and you may not even have to, you may not even have to testify at trial. Well, okay. I would like to, honestly. I am not okay. going to go through that trial right. and have things said about me and feel like the jury is making a decision based off of their feelings of me without getting to actually see or hear sure. from me, you know? Okay. And, and honestly, yep. I'm, I'm going to be interested because, you know, they, are they, that cop's going to have to testify who arrested me, right? Yeah. Yeah. And are you planning on asking him about what I said? Yeah, Yeah, because I, mean, I made the specific statement to him that he asked me why I wouldn't read the order, and I said, I can't read it. And his response to that was, well, that's ridiculous. It's written in plain English. And then he arrested me. And I have a response to that because well, it wasn't about the English of it. It's, it's really simple. I am, I have anxiety like you would not believe. And when you're going to present a document to me and make me sign it, and then I find out that it is allowing someone to hurt my kids, you think I'm going to be able to handle sitting there and going through and saying, okay, what the hell does this mean from a legal perspective? Because that's the other thing. The documents that they have me sign, they aren't using regular English terms. They're using the, the legal definitions of those terms. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're going to be held to have to. I, saying I don't understand or I can't understand won't be a defense, buddy. Oh, I know okay. that. I don't care. I don't care. I know that it is completely within my rights to point out to people that you have no clue what it's like to suffer from Asperger's and have no idea what's going on and have everyone tell you that it's okay, you're understood. And that's the thing is what you just said to me about how you always understand me Everyone's been saying to th that to me throughout my life. And then I turn around, and at the end, the conclusion, you know, and this is why I'm so afraid of the trial, is because there, then I find out what people actually think I meant. And there I find out, well, oh, okay. well, there's no, there's no way for you to defend yourself because now your words have been defined, and everyone's defined what well, you mean. Well, here's what I am going to say, Brian. I am going to say that the, when you went back to take a shower at the apartment across the hallway... Okay. It wasn't across the hallway. Where was it? It was within the zone of the protection. Room. Yeah, it was okay. the house. It was that's the house the that's... That's a technical violation. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's a technical violation. All right? The email, even though it's bullshit, that's a technical violation. How is that a technical okay. violation? That can't be a technical violation. I was not required by law to do it. I was required by law to do it. Well, we'll let the we'll let the court decide that. Okay. <laughs> well, no, but I'm going to post this all online, be... and we'll let everyone decide it. That's what's going to happen. No one's going to. Well, that's not going to make any difference. It's well, I don't. It's not going to make any difference to me or what happens to me. No, but you don't seem to understand. I don't care. <laughs> I've been hurt so many times in my life. If he sends well, me to jail this for this, a really productive conversation vis-a-vis -vis your trial. 
Well, okay. that's fine. It is a productive conversation for what I need to understand. You know, I don't understand any okay, well, of this. You need to understand this. You need to understand this, okay? I think that there's a good chance that you're going to be found guilty of two technical violations of the TPO. I think that that will probably happen. Based on my experience and what I know of this case, I also think that even after you're found guilty, the Judge Bogan isn't going to do anything to you. He will put you probably on non-reporting probation and just tell you don't do it again. Which, for the entire year that this case has been going on, you haven't had one single problem or issue regarding that TPO. Yeah, because you, you know what if, you if, can follow it and do the right thing. If they right. had actually so sat down with I me, and that's what I mean. Happen. If you had sat down with me months ago and given me an hour so that I could go through these things and understand, it, I would be in a completely have, different I place have, right I've now. Told, actually, I've told you this, Brian. I've told you this. Exactly. Clearly. In court? I sat down with it, you at court. Exactly. In a place where I can't actually focus phone, and understand? Said, look, I... Well, then you're going to have to figure that out, okay? Now, if you're saying you're incompetent, that's a different thing. <laughs> and that's this is the whole point is that you guys are okay. ignoring. You can't say I don't understand because I have a disability, and then say that I. No, I'm not asking confident. for. Okay. I'm asking for more. This is exactly what I mean. This is and this is what I'm going to point out. I wanted more time in court to begin with, and if he had gotten his way and had quote unquote followed due process and pushed me through quickly, I would have been screwed. I would have not understood none of this. You know, I it took me the, all of this time to, to come to the point of being able to talk to you about this and help. understand. Well, okay. well, you can you can help out because by giving me that time to, 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 this is the thing. And this you is what... had a year, Brian. You okay. Year. You could have taken me to court and talked to me in court in a way where I could have... I have taken you. No, you haven't. I have. I don't... I've been very patient and understand. You're not going to pull this back on me. I'm not putting okay. it back on you. I'm I've asking you... I'm telling you things that I didn't get. and I've explained to you over and over what the situation is. All right. Very clearly. Very patiently. Okay? Can, can I explain my situation and... You have. No, I haven't. You have. No, I haven't. Okay. I have not. You, what have you been just doing? I've been trying to explain, and uh, you have been, You've been getting I, upset. Not, I, and I don't understand why upset. you're upset. I'm not upset. Well, you just I'm yelled at me for something that I wasn't right. trying to say. I didn't yell at you. I didn't yell at you. you well, I'm sorry. Me. You didn't you yell at me, but you disagreed with me again. for something that I didn't say. I didn't say I, anything about you what said, you were doing I wrong. I was pointing out things that... If, if I had taken the time to explain things to you, it wouldn't be this way. Yeah, and I didn't okay. know that until now, this time. That's my whole point. Is I am trying to figure this out as I go. We've had this conversation go. several times, man. We've had this conversation several times. What conversation? I've explained to you what the, the conversation where I explained to you about the technical violation of the TPO. No, that's what not I what I'm talking about. Be, what I think is going to happen at trial and what I think will happen, okay? I can't help <sighs> all of these other tangential issues. I can't. It just relates to the violation of the TPO. Oh. We've got a pre-trial set tomorrow at 2 o'clock. If you can be there, that's fine. If you can't, I'll call you and let you know what's going on. Okay? But I'm not comfortable being in the, the courtroom. That's my whole point. If I had been... I don't know what you do about that. If, you're gonna have to, if we're having a trial, you're going to have to be in the courtroom. Exactly. And you. Oh. I, and I know that you could have gotten me time in the courtroom if I had known that before. That's my whole point. What time are you talking? What time in the courtroom do you want? Like ten minutes for me and you to go to the courtroom about. and show me around and talk to me about everything that's going on and what means. I gotta show you around the courtroom. You can't show me where I'm gonna sit and all that. I mean, uh, even when I went in there for, with yeah, you before, I, you I, tomorrow, I couldn't figure it you, out. If you come tomorrow, I'll show you. Uh, if you come tomorrow, I'll show you where you sit. Thank you. Okay. I mean. That's, you sit on the right side. You know, all the stupid, easy things that you just assume people understand, I don't get them. So I'm uh, trying to I'm trying to I catch up so all the time. Tomorrow and I'll explain it to you. All right, I'll thank you. I'll explain it to you tomorrow. All right? All right, thank all you. All right, bud. Talk to you later. All right, bye.
Elter's office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Hi, Mr. Elzer. This is Brian Benke. I was calling um, uh, about our conversation yesterday. You asked me to call you today, so I was hoping to get an update from you. If you can call me back, my cell phone number is 513-614-9702. Thank you. Elter's office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Hi, Mr. Elter. I'm just trying to uh, make my plans for next week for work. If you could call me back, this is Brian Benneke. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Yeah, one second. I'll transfer you over. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Alter. This is Brian Benneke calling again. Uh, please call me back. My cell phone number is 513-614-9702. Thank you.
So that is the third phone call. And usually I don't even get through to the uh, receptionist. Help you? Uh, yes, my, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I had answered the wrong line. Just a moment. Thank you. Uh... Mr. Nate Elter. Hi, Mr. Elter. This is Brian Benneke. All right, I was just calling to get an update. Yes, it looks like Wednesday's going to be reset. I have to talk to the court to find out when when that'll be, and then I'll give you a call. You called the other day, and I know you called a million times, but I didn't have your phone number. I, so, I left it on the message, I thought. I didn't hear it. That's why I hit you, so give it to me now, so I got it. All right, it's 513. Six one four okay. nine seven zero two. All right, cool. So do not stress about Wednesday. All right, I will call you back here in a little bit when I find out from court when it's been reset. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, buddy. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hello? Elter's office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? One moment. It's 
Hi, Mr. Elcher. Hey, Brian. How are you? I, Brian Beneke? Yes, this is Brian Beneke. How are you doing? Um, both, you know, good and bad. Okay. Um, I haven't gotten a date yet for our new trial. Okay. That's why you're calling, right? Um, no. That is not why I'm calling. Okay. Um... But thank you for letting me know that you had not received a date yet. I was wondering why I had not received a call from you. Yeah, I haven't gotten a date yet. But no, that's... Okay, so what's up? I wanted to discuss that recording that you let me take in the courtroom the other day. Do you remember? Okay. okay. I'm heading into court. Yeah, no, I do. I'm heading into court right now. Okay, can you call so me really at, a time, at another time? Yeah. Okay. On the yeah, this is my number. It's 513-614-9702. Okay, sure. Yeah. I'll give you a call. Do you know about what time I should expect that? Not really. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm working right now. That's why I asked. Like, yeah, no problem, man. Um, I'll try, this, try about one or two this afternoon. Okay, okay. thank you. Yep, all oh, right, man. All right. Take care. Bye. State Elter's office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Just a moment. Hi, Mr. Elter. This is Brian Benneke. My cell phone number is 513-614-9702. Um, I was calling again. I know that you said you would call me yesterday. Um, I had a really hard time that you didn't call because it's hard for me to plan my day. So. If you can call me back when you have time to talk, I would appreciate it. I'll try again tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good day.
I have tried to get old of him now for three days and when we left the courtroom he used the term tomorrow when he said he would call me so I gave him one day he did not call me I assume that when he used the term tomorrow that he meant it in the context of a day in the future Um, it's become obvious to me that he is actually treating me the way that a cop would treat someone. When I tried to talk about what I wanted to try to talk about, he cut me off and told me what he thought about it and then proceeded to take my words out of context to try to coerce me into agreeing with him. I, I, I'm so glad that when I felt that way, I put my head down, because I know that if I hadn't, I would have just agreed with him. I'm done being treated this way. Oh, I got a whole lot in the hold off. Stop recording. Alright, well, hopefully he calls me back. I take that as a sign that he's on the call, but I don't know. I'm going to try again at 10 o'clock and every half hour after that until I get to leave a voicemail. And this is the crazy thing is, so I have him doing this, and at the same exact time, I have my work. <sighs> Similar situation, they, they did not like what I had to say. <sighs> I'm going I'm to start recording this again. So I was just explaining that... Matrix, the company I'm working for, my boss did not like something that I had to say, did not have the conscientiousness to listen to me, chose to take something that I was saying out of context, namely that I didn't know when I was trying to say that I didn't know how to explain it better, and said that she didn't know, rather than using active listening skills, trying to contextualize with me, and I, in dealing with all of this, realized that um, because my OOD representative works for the same company, and when I started, I talked to her about it, and she assured me that she would be able to stay unbiased, and I... I still believe her, but I don't think that that matters because the company can work through her without her knowledge. And I'm trying to deal with my company, trying to talk to them about that. And my boss went on vacation to Cabo, <sighs> sent me a message after I sent her a message telling her all, not all of that, but telling her that she violated my rights. Sent me a message saying, have a great week. People just don't care. They expect me to know what's going on with them, but they don't care to even find out what's going on with me before they just start trampling over what I'm able to do in my rights, and I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it now that I've realized that that's what it is. That's what's been going on my entire life. That's what been, people have been doing to me. It's pathetic, and it stops. I'm done with it. I really am.
I'm done. All these fucking people. He doesn't even want, he doesn't even bother trying. Elcher doesn't answer again. It's become obvious to me that this world is just full of the shittiest fucking people. I'm going to call Nate Elcher again. Hi, this is Brian Benicky. May I speak to Mr. Elcher, please? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Mr. Elcher. This is Brian Benicky calling again. Uh, my cell phone number is 513-614-9702. I have tried to get a hold of you now for three days. Um, I It is important that you call me back. Thank you. didn't even realize I was still recording.
Dade Elter's office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? One moment. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Alter. This is Brian Benneke. Hey, buddy. I still haven't gotten a notice yet. Okay. I, I haven't gotten a date yet. I understand that. Uh, do okay. you have time to talk? Well, sure. What's up? Um, I wanted to talk about that recording that I made. Yeah. So, okay. um, I listened to that recording... And I listened to the recording of the hearing. And I was able to put the two together and contextualize it. I... Well, the only reason that it's being used in, in our case, okay, is to show that you were served with the order. May I finish, That's please? All. I, I yeah, wasn't even. Finish. I'm just telling you what's. I'm not okay. I'm not going to do this going back and forth. If you want to tell me what's up, go ahead and tell me what's up. Okay, then in that case, I will say when I'm finished. I was trying to speak and you cut me off. I'm sorry that it takes me a while to get out what I'm trying to say. I listened to both recordings. In the recording that I made with you. Do you remember the point in the conversation where I put my head down? No. No? You don't remember when I put my head Why down? Why is this relevant, Brian? Why is this relevant, Brian? You put your head down several times and would not look at me. Yeah. Why is that relevant? Because when I did that, I stopped looking at you because I was afraid and because I was hurting. Okay? And when you told me that you were pointing at things and I wasn't looking, you were referencing a previous conversation, right? Mr. Elter? Okay. What is, this, what is the relevance of this? That was taken out of context. When you did that, when I had my head down, I was not able to contextualize what you were talking about. Okay, well, what I was just telling you was where people sit in the courtroom. So I'm not sure okay. the relevance of this conversation. You verbally abused me when you, you were telling me wrong. that... You wrong and that is not true and I'm not gonna I'm not I'm really not gonna do this okay it's been pretty straightforward okay and that, the whole purpose of that statement is to show that you knew the order was served on you okay I would That's like more about. I would like more of that hearing played in my trial I would like more of that I'm CD play, the, the, I'm not gonna play the hearing at our trial because those issues that happened in that hearing aren't relevant if they are going to play the, if they're going to play the recording, then I am allowed to talk about it to give it context. That is what I'm asking you to help me do. I told you you don't have to testify. I want to. I'm trying to give you context so that you can help me give the court context, like it's my right to do. You know what? I've been doing this for 26 years. I know how to do this, okay? But I'm allowed... Complex. Part of the problem is, is that you're trying to blend all of the issues from all of the cases into one matter, and that's not what's happening. No, I'm not, sir. I was trying okay. to show you the problem when people... And I was not verbally abusive to you at all. I was very patient with you, and I've been very patient with you. Sir, okay? you... Part of the problems that you have can't be resolved in this case, or by me. No, I am trying to talk to you because what you did was not right. I'm not going to play that game. 
I treated you fairly. I treated you appropriately. So I'm not going to play the victim game. Okay? I'm not playing I the victim, you sir. I'm trying to talk to you about the context. Okay. I'm trying to talk to you about the context. Okay. At, no, it doesn't have anything to do with the context. Yes, it does. Okay. I have Asperger's. I cannot contextualize easily. I can't help that. I okay, help that. but I can ask you to not take things out of context. I'm allowed to I'm ask taking, that. I'm not taking anything out of context. Yes, you okay. are. You, right I, now, no, you I'm are. Not. Yes. The conversation's ending. You are taking this out of context, sir. Uh, Oh, hi, Nate. Hey, I didn't mean to be hard on you, okay? And I'm not trying to minimize your situation at all. But there's only certain things I can do for you, okay? Um, so go ahead. Lay, lay it on me what you're going to tell me. And I won't say anything until you're totally done. Because sometimes, and, and it's just kind of me learning to work with you, sometimes when you talk and you stop, I think you're done. That's why I start talking, okay? So I don't mean to interrupt you like that. So... Go ahead and tell me everything you want to tell me. Okay, thank you, first off, for calling me back. And thank you for saying that. Sure. It, it, no, it, it, it is... The reason why I put my head down is because I get this point where, you know, like when someone says something that makes no sense to you and you're like, that hurts my head? Yeah. Okay, I get to that point and it hurts everywhere. And I never understood that other people don't go through that at all okay so when I was in that room with you I went through that and when I was in the room with the magistrate I went through that and when I was in the room with the judge I went through that every single person that I talk to does not understand that I can't contextualize easily so I try and start where I'm at and I try and tell where I'm at and then I have to say where you're at and then I can think about it and kind of get somewhere. I don't do it well, so, you know, that's why I asked for an advocate at the beginning. Because that, everyone expects you to just do that. They expect you to know what their context is. And when they say something, they expect you to be able to figure out the context that they're speaking in. And be able to figure out your own context and talk using all three of those together and i can't do any of those three have, are you in this, uh, this personal question you don't have to answer you're not are yeah. you seeing anybody now to help you with this the i had an ood um what uh, is that i'm sorry i can't forget that people don't know the acronyms it's an <laughs> uh, uh um, Ohioan or Office for Ohioans with Disabilities. It is okay. a government slash nonprofit. I don't know where the nonprofit starts and the government begins, but it's government funded and it's run through nonprofits that work with companies that have uh, contractors who are counselors. So I had a counselor who was given to me by a case manager at OOD, o Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities, which I got to through the Department of, or D, oh, oh my goodness, I can never remember this one, uh, Department of Jobs and Family Services, I think is what it's called. Okay. Uh, they're, yeah, right, they're, right. they're over in the building with the, uh, um, uh, the, Opportunities for Ohioans there in town. Yeah, in town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got uh, them. I have a counselor through, but I had to actually have her step aside because of a conflict of interest because the job I'm working right now, she works for the same company, and I had a contract issue come up, and it occurred to me that even if she is um, honest, and I do believe she's honest, she still doesn't know what the company's doing. So I have to have someone who's neutral who can help me talk and figure out that context to talk to the company. So she was helping me with uh, job issues, but as far as like personal, emotional issues, 
I've had no help other than my therapy uh, for that's what I was thinking, yeah. and so you know? I've been trying to adjust as best I can and just use the things that I have and the skills that I know I have and it's hard <laughs> um, you know, I think that I think one thing is is that it, it probably would help for you to go you know have somebody to go see for treatment not necessarily just a counselor because sometimes you know they're trying to help you but they can't necessarily they don't really provide treatment or in some instances you may be opposed to it and not but depending on medication right? well as far as you know, getting treatment goes I need to get uh I, behavioral therapy, I think is what it's called, uh, which is, you know, a specific type of therapy. And sure. I've been trying to just, you know, use the, the, um, the concepts and follow some of the, yeah. the best See, practices, I'm about, right, but, I'm but about somebody that would be like your doctor person, like, I know that I, you would see like on a monthly basis, you know, I'm trying, I'm sorry. I'm trying to we change context so i'm trying to get into the context that we're talking okay. i i have done quite a number of things on that front the latest is that i am trying to find a doctor who does video conferencing because here in town the people that i can go see there's only two clinics and one of them does not offer treatment for asperger's they only offer treatment for other behavioral disorders Okay. Yeah, and the other office is a completely nonprofit and is run by uh, um, students. They're not they're not actual yeah. like licensed. Right. Yeah, so that it's one. Very tough to get help. Yeah, it's been super difficult. So I'm trying to do it through video because with video technology being what it is, I know that there's options that are free. It's just finding them. So right now my brother is helping me find them. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. And that's why I want to talk about all of this because it's it's so hard for me. When I got arrested, and I had to, you know, start going through all of this, and I was realizing how much I didn't remember of all of it, and now having to work this hard, like this, you and me talking. I have wanted to have a good conversation with you for so long because it's been so difficult for me to say things. And I say, you know, like two sentences and I feel like you don't understand. And then you cut me off and it hurts. I'm sorry for that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, buddy. And I apologize. I didn't realize. See, I, I, I picked up now when you stop, you're not necessarily done. No, so, I'm thinking. Yeah. And. I didn't want to yell at you. That's why I put my head down, because the only reactions I've ever had to that are either yelling or hurting myself. Okay. So, you know, it's like, I'd rather put my head down and have everyone think I'm an asshole than respond. Well, I apologize for putting you in that condition. Thank you. That situation. Okay. But I need to contextualize that for people, because I'm done with it, you know? Yeah. And now that I get what's going on, and I'm starting to, like, see the steps I have to take with people, it's hard. But I'm doing yeah. it, and I'm not going to stop because I'm sick and tired of it. Well, and that's why I called you back because you've always been really good in terms of us discussing stuff. And I was like, look, that just, you know, that just got off on the wrong foot, so I needed to call you back. No, I, I thank you. I really appreciate it because I just, when I hung up that phone call, I was just beside myself because I was so worried about what context you thought I was talking in. And, yeah. you know, you don't know my past, and this is the other context so i was raised in a military family i spent my most of my formative years at uh the united states military academy at west point so when it comes to being disciplined for not acting correctly believe me there's nothing that you can do that is as severe as what i've had done to me and none of it works <laughs> gotcha. yeah so that's why i get have such a hard time because it's like okay now this person is putting me into a situation where they don't understand how bad it is and i have to still function appropriately right. for society right. so i don't like going around cops i don't like going around authority i don't like i don't like talking to doctors or lawyers or nurses or receptionists 
all of that, like every single one of those things I'm having to work through right now and learn to contextualize it individually because I can't do it offhand. Yeah. So. I got you. Yeah. All right. So now, um, what do you want to tell me about the, the, the recording for the, court? The recording for court, the reason why I wanted it more of it included is because I want to explain these things to the jury. And, you know, they don't have to agree with me, but they need to understand it. And they need to understand that this is something where I know they can go and look it up. You know, like right now you can go on a Netflix and watch Asperger's R Us and watch these guys going through the same thing that I've been going through and hear them talking about it from a different perspective. And it's really nice because going online and getting different perspectives is what helped me to kind of get my own. Because that's been yeah. what, what's been missing in my life is I just never got my own context. It's... Well, I really give you props for looking out and seeking stuff out on your own. Most people don't do that. Well, like I said, you know, it's not that I'm doing it for myself. I want to do this because I can't see leaving a world for my kids that's not changed better than what I had it, you know? I think everyone feels that way. So. Yeah. That is why I'm doing all of this, and that's why I'm not going to stop. You know, I, I have to laugh because my soccer coach would understand this perfectly. He loved me in soccer because as soon as I saw had the ball, if I wanted the goal, I was just going, you know? People couldn't stop me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I appreciate you talking to me, and I don't know where this will lead, and I don't know what we can do about it, but I'm I need to talk about it. I need people to know. I don't care if they believe me. I don't care if they convict me. I don't care if the judge sends me no, to jail for it. You. That's why I called you back. And, and we'll figure out a way for you to convey what we're talking about. And if it is to play the disc, we'll just play the disc, dude. Okay. I'll just do what you want. Okay? Thank, thank you. All right. You call the shots. I work for you. Okay? Thank you. Thank so, you. Yeah. All right, man. So when I get a date, Okay. Yeah. There's no reason we don't have a date yet. It's just because of what we're doing. I know. Court. It's the paperwork in the, the court, you know. Yeah. I, their headaches with them. And that's the other thing. It's like, I would love to have a good conversation with the court and just be like, you guys have it set up so that people like me, right away, I can't, I have to figure out, okay, what's the context of each individual part of this courthouse before I can, right. can do right. anything? Right. Maybe one of the things, no matter what we do, is I'll arrange it so that you get the chance to tell the judge that. Okay. okay. Well, I appreciate it. And All right. thank you again. Yep. Um, I'll no wait. Problem, man. You won't hear from me again until you call me to let me know the date for the trial. I'll call you next week. I'll call you next week. Okay, All thank right. you. All right, buddy. All, All right. Good night. You too. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Alright, so I am going to be trying to call my lawyer to talk about what's going on with this prosecutor again. Really. Yeah, I'm not, not happy about this. <clears throat> and not what I like doing at all. <laughs> it gives me so much anxiety, and that's not good. Um, alright. Court it. It's 9.45 on Wednesday, November 10th. Office. Hi, this is Brian Benneke. May I speak to Mr. Elter, please? Just a moment. How are you, man? 
Hi, Mr. Elter. Hey, you know what? I haven't heard from them in terms of scheduling. What's your number? It's 614 something. I'm not sitting here. It's 614. Nine seven. You know, I remember that part. <laughs> uh, it's Go ahead. 614 All right. So I'm going to call court right now, see if they have a date, and I'll call you back either way. Okay. okay? Um, do All right, man. All oh, right. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was just wondering what was really going on. It was... I haven't heard anything, man. I haven't heard anything, you know? Um, and the thing is, I keep, I'm, you know, it, like I said, um, they'd let you plead to one, dismiss one, and nothing's going to happen. But, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in in terms of trying it. You know, if you want to just plead, get it over with, and I don't think he'd even put you on probation. I think it'd be over with. We could do that, but... I think you've always felt that, hey, I'm not going to plead. I'm not going to do that. We're going to we're going to take it to trial, right? Okay. Right. Did you talk to them about the the um, guy that I was talking to you about? Um, the what? Uh, the prosecutor, uh, or um, what was his name? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have his name in front of me. Uh, the guy oh, in Revelson. court. Yeah. Did, did I talk to him about what? I couldn't hear you. Oh, did you talk to them about him? You mean about? him working at the bank? Yeah, about the whole it, thing that I had talked to you about. Him working at the bank and then you applying there, right? Yeah. Is that, is that, is that, is that correct? Yeah, that's what I was talking no, I about. Haven't ta I, haven't, I haven't talked to the judge about that um, in terms of what you think there's a conflict there. Well, I was just wondering because when we spoke in court, you said that they were changing the prosecutor. Let me double, no, the prosecutor is not, they're not changing the prosecutor because of your case. The prosecutor is not, he's leaving that job. That's what I meant. Okay, yeah, they are changing prosecutors, but it's what it's not because of you or your case. He's just not going to be prosecuted anymore at the end of December. He's leaving the job, okay? Who is so that? The, I'm really confused. I'm sorry, Then I was really confused in court. So that's someone else who's just leaving? No. Oh. The prosecutor that we have, the prosecutor that we have right now that we've had through this whole case, he's, he's quitting. He's not going to be the prosecutor anymore. He's going to do other jobs elsewhere. So there will be another prosecutor that comes in. I don't know who that is yet. Okay, well, I mean, you might want to talk to him considering that the prosecutor on the case committed an ethical breach, and from my position, it seems like there is a lot of questions and unanswered questions about what's going on with all of this from my end. I really am not Hello. comfortable with any of this. Any of it. I'll just let you know, I have been speaking to my brother about this, and... He is an officer in Special Forces at Fort Bragg. I have prepared... Oh, what branch? What branch? Uh, he is in... Uh, I forget what they call it, but it's the Army's version of Crisis Intervention Services. Uh, if you're oh, aware of like that... Rangers? Is he a ranger? No. No. Rangers are separate unit. Crisis Intervention okay. Services, similar to what the police do. You know what, oh, the, okay. you know what the police have yeah. with Crisis Intervention se Services? The army right. has the same thing, and he is an officer who works in that branch. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, I spoke to him about all of this. He's aware of everything that is going on. He is okay. fully aware, and I have prepared what I'm going to say. I prepared my defense. I am very upset with the fact that it has taken me over a year to get anywhere. And I hear you. I, we don't really have any control over that. It's kind of a judge setting it. Well, I, I, I didn't receive the recording that you said they're going to play in court. I have no idea what other evidence they're going to play on me. You've been having discussions with the with the judge and the prosecutor in chambers, which means they're not recorded. So there's no way for me to know what they've said to you or what's been going on. This entire well, I thing you. is... I, I told you. I told you I, okay, you well, also you you yelled at me for asking questions. Actually, Brian, we've been through that. Remember, you and I had a conversation. I called you back. We had a good conversation after that, remember? You think that that remember was a good conversation because of the emotional state that you take from what I'm saying. That has nothing to do with how I took it. 
and that has nothing to do with how I feel about what's going on. Do you remember that? Do you remember that I called you back and we had another conversation after that, and I said I apologize that I had uh, been terse with you and that I was understanding that it because you explained to me that it takes you longer to say things and that I needed to wait to hear you. Yeah. Remember do you know that? how many people have apologized to me about that and then stuck a knife in my back? I'm not gonna stick a knife in your back. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you say that. Thing. I'm glad that you say well, that. Because I'm okay. worried about it. You gotta relax. You gotta relax. Okay? Here's the thing. You gotta relax. Judges have had this because there have been problems with COVID doing a jury trial. All right? So that's the big thing. All right? The big issue is getting people in dealing with COVID in the jury trial. All right? The prosecutor who's been on this. I'm sorry, Mr. Elter? Hello? Can you hear me? Can uh, yes. Me? Yes, I can hear you. So, this is the same as it's always been, okay? If you to call me, he can call me and talk to him about it, too. All right? So, it's no problem. It's nothing that's going on our end. The prosecutor, who was the prosecutor in, our, in this case the last year, is leaving at the end of the year. He's just not doing prosecuting anymore. He's got too much work going on at the bank. All right? Doesn't have anything to do with our case. I don't know who the new prosecutor is going to be, all right? But the thing that we've had since day one is that we're not going to enter a plea to this charge and that we were going to have a trial, all right? You wanted a jury trial. Jury trials take time to get the people in and go through that whole process. That's not my okay? concern. I'm not really concerned about that at all. Like, the, the timing okay, for the trial... Are you concerned about? Oh, no, what I... What are you concerned about? I'm... My confusion. <laughs> you know, okay, well, it's very... Well, what are you very... confused about? I'm happy to tell you. I... I have so many questions, and I have to think about what you said before I can even know how to begin. That's a problem, is that the questions hey, are what's hard for me. Do this? Well, you can, can, you, can you come see me sometime at my office? Where, where is your office? It's right down the street from the court. Because what I'm saying is, why don't you take time and write down what your questions are, okay? So that, like, when we get together, or I can meet you at the courthouse and we can do it, whichever you're more comfortable I, I'm not comfortable okay. at the courthouse at all. The courthouse is, right. that's why I don't like would this whole situation. I right. mean, as, as long as it's not going to be a situation like at the courthouse where there's thousands of people around and I'm, I'm. Just be you and me. Yeah. You just come and, you could just come and sit in my office and then you'd have your list of questions. We can take as long as you want. That way you don't feel like you're being rushed or there's something else going on. Okay. okay? Yeah. I would be willing to do that. That way you can write your stuff down ahead of time. Right. Oh, I've already just, written it down. I mean, that's okay, the thing, good. is that I, I write down the stuff, but now that I'm talking to you, I need to sit down and write down more and figure out what's going on, what I need to really ask, because, you, you know, this is a situation where the stakes are my children's lives. So, people act like I am a simpleton because I can't explain things to them, and that is not the case. But I do know that I have n no ability to do any of this. But I'm going to do what I can, and I'm going to set up a situation so that if the court does not stop violating my rights and start listening, I'm going to make sure that people know about it. I'm sick and tired of it happening to me, and people acting like it doesn't matter because I can't show it. That's not my opinion, you know what I mean? Well, I appreciate I'm that. To help you be so that you, you can say, your, and say what you want. I will tell you this. When I show up, I will have the exact... Uh, the, the one thing that I did do was I went through that recording from the, the TPO trial and found the exact time when she did it to me and the exact quote, and we can go through it and talk about it, and I'll explain it all to you. Well, that doesn't really... It doesn't really go to, though... The violations themselves. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, that's you fine know. if you want to say that. Well, I, I, I'm just saying because it really just has to deal. And like I said, I've had many conversations with the court about this, and the issue is if I could if I could get the prosecution to drop it, that would everybody thinks that nobody thinks that you've done anything that's been 
Well, I can tell you this I that I can tell you this that their actions, what they did to me there, what she said to me, and the 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 lack of dignity that she gave towards my due process and the fact that I was begging them to understand how difficult it was for me. And she didn't understand that as soon as she did that, I was unable to process any of it. And it was like, it, it was like when you wake up from a dream and everything just goes away and those memories are there, but they're not. So for her to do that and for them to then shove it in my face when I've been trying so hard, if they had not done what they did from, with Kelly from the beginning and assumed that just because a lady comes in and says, this man is mean and angry and he's hurting me, that she's telling the truth and actually I required true evidence and due process and shown me the evidence before the day of the TPO hearing. I didn't see any of that before the day of the TPO hearing. And they well, call this the fair? Thing, and they call this legal? Here's, well, here's, here's one thing that you got to keep in mind, and it's kind of tough, is that you can't really challenge the validity of the TPO in this case in Lebanon Municipal. I don't okay? care. I don't care. Well, it's the truth. They're gonna, they're gonna tell me that I have to tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But then they're gonna tell me that they have to cut the truth into pieces and call it the truth. It's a lie. I am fine if the judge tells me to shut up. If the judge tells me to shut up, I'll shut up. You know that I listen and that I'm respectful. But I'm not gonna lie. I'm not going to lie. I know you're not gonna. For anyone. I'm saying though that. Exactly, which is why I bring up to the court all of the things that they've violated and say, okay, well, if you don't want to listen to me about what's going on and I'm pointing out to you all the things that you've done wrong, what does that say about you? That's not, well, the trial's not really... The, not the, I'm talking really about the judge. The judge assigned me that first lawyer who, in a hallway full of people, accused me of being guilty. The judge then didn't listen to me in the first time I went in front of him and made my mom go up in front of him and talk about what was going on with me and dismissed her rudely, she will testify that in court, I can guarantee you. That, that, that she, doesn't have anything to do with your case. This has right? everything to do with bias that judge shows towards people that he does you're, not like. You're not gonna, I don't I'm care. Not, I, it's the truth. Okay, I'm not and I don't, I don't expect you to pursue any of this. Well, it's the truth, I and I will tell you the truth you about what happened in the case, and you can tell me what I can do, what you think I can do. Okay. okay. And we'll, and we'll see where that. the pieces fall. Okay. Now, you know, this thing is, it, it, there's only, the only cases that you have down in Lebanon Municipal are for violating the TPO. Yeah, and you what told me that the second one counts as a felony. The, the you tried to scare me into signing the plea deal be the first time by saying that the second one counts as a felony. Yes, you did. I never said that. You said it counts as a felony. You said that to me the first time that we talked. No, I said domestic violence twice can count as a felony, okay? Then why? Yes, you did. You're really going to argue with me on that? I'm not. I totally disagree with you. And here's the thing I'm trying to be really patient. Okay, and you say all these accusatory things and, and start to attack me because I'm trying to tell you what reality is. Okay, I'm if, if you're not going to listen to me and you're going to continue to take this attitude, then I'm just going to have to withdraw. Okay, because I'm not going to be able to represent you because you, you, you're just combative with me. I can't change what reality is. Okay, one, you got two violations, one was for showing up and taking a shower. Okay. You didn't talk to her, you didn't see her, you didn't anything. She just saw your vehicle there, okay? I consider that to be very, very flimsy. I think that's one of the more flimsier violations you can have. Is it a technical violation? It is, because you were within the yardage of the order that you were not supposed to be. The second violation is you inadvertently sending her an email regarding discovery in your divorce case. Again, I think that's bullshit that you got charged with that because you didn't threaten her and you didn't do anything inappropriate, okay? That's why I called them technical violations because in the spirit of it, you didn't really do anything. I'm with you on that, okay? But the problem is is that 
technically they're violations. But I've already spoken to the judge, and he's already said to me several times, he's not going to do anything to you. Can I just he's say something to you, please? Can I say something to you, please? Because you've all said you said all this before, and I thought about what you said just now, and I need to say something. You said that you are on my side, and that you did not mean to imply when we first spoke that the second violation was a felony, and that that's why I should take the plea deal. I didn't say that. Actually, oh. I never told you. I've never told you to take a plea deal. I have never told you that. Okay. okay? You know what? So I'm just gonna say this. You know, it is beyond upsetting for people to tell me after I have explained to them that I have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder for them to sit there and throw my communication issues back in my face as a justification for them just ignoring my position if you did not I'm mean not that ignoring your position. I'm not ignoring your position and I didn't tell you that okay? I didn't tell you that the second one's a, a felony and I've never tried to get you to please I'm then not doing this. You tried to get it? With you. I did not. I've never tried to get you to plead. I told you that if you plead, nothing will happen to you. I told you that. I didn't tell you that the second one was a felony. I never did, because it's not. Okay? So, here's the deal. If you want to come in and talk to me about your case, I'm willing to do that. Otherwise, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to tell the judge that I can't represent you. I'm sorry, so are you telling me that I either have to come in and talk to you or you're going to withdraw? No, you no, you don't have to come in and talk to me. I offered that you can come in and talk to me. But if we continue to have these kind of conversations where you just want to... I, I can't help the tangents that you're going on, okay? That's not what I'm appointed to help you with, okay? I've been honest with you on your side and supported you since day one. The court isn't going to make special allowances in its process and its trial because of the disability that you think you have, okay? It's, it's not. First off, I have a fucking diagnosis from a doctor, so right, if we're going to play that game... Here's the thing. I'm not playing a game, but I am gonna make, I'm going to make a motion to withdraw, okay? And they're going to have to appoint somebody else for you, okay? Because this isn't working. I've tried to be patient with you, so yeah, I am telling you now I am going to withdraw, okay? Because I've tried to be patient with you. I know it's taken a long time to get this case done. I don't have anything to do with that. The okay, said, the the said, the length right? of time is good for me because you guys inadvertently gave me enough time to think it through. That's the point. Okay. You tried to I'm force not, it through my throat. You guys, all right, Brian, here's what's happening, okay? I'm going down to court today to file a motion to withdraw as counsel. You'll be appointed future counsel, okay? You'll be given a notice at your address who your new attorney is, okay? So that's that's how that's going to go, okay? So uh, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm trying to be patient with you. I've tried to be considerate with you. You just want to attack. You just want to tell me things that, that are not accurate and aren't going to play into the trial. And then when I tell you that, you get mad at me. So I'm not doing it, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. You're You'll gaslighting me, just so you know. I'm not gaslighting you. Yes, you, you are. Okay? Uh, that is what you're, you're doing. You, you, you are gaslighting you have no me. Idea. I I'm do. Not. I'm actually withdrawing his counsel because I don't need to take this abuse off of you. You abused okay. me first. You yeah, abused me abused from you, the Ryan. beginning. Bye. Goodbye. He sits there. The first thing out of his mouth is to ignore me, then to say, oh, just plea deal. When I bring up my, my pro problems and points, oh, they don't matter. When I bring up the points that do matter, they're not valid. Oh, you're being abusive and mean to Brian, but you're not? That, what happened to me just there was not abusive and mean. This was appropriate. Seriously. Tell me, world, is this appropriate? Is this my life? You wonder why people have such a hard time. I have been working for weeks to be able to think this through and call that man. I posted 
the times that I have had a hard time with him. And I have talked to you about everything that has gone on. And they say that this is the way that it should be done. No. It's not. It's not even the way that they fucking write down that it should be done. This is the truth. The truth is that I live in Ohio, a state that is conservative and wants to pretend like it is the 1960s. It is not. And I'm sick and tired of people doing it to me. And I'm sick and tired of ripping apart my life because they hurt me so much. And I'm sick and tired of it hurting my kids. So you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to end this video on a positive note. Because he's not doing that to me. So, I have a very hard time with communication. I don't think about words the same way that other people do. And that's hard for me. And I don't like talking to people. Um, but I've always loved words and reading and... For the longest time, I let people make me think that it didn't matter and I didn't matter. And so, I have been working on myself and trying to figure out what matters to me. And one of the things that matters to me a lot is I really like the beauty of words. And I always liked poetry in school, but you know... <laughs> Especially when you play sports, um, people don't treat you very well. I feel like poetry, and I just can't stand that kind of treatment, so I hit it. But I have been, um, well, I've been making something, and I decided to try a form of poetry that I had never tried before. Um, this is uh, called a sonnet. And a sonnet is an old spot style of poetry that has 14 lines and the lines have to follow a strict uh, formula to be considered like a, a traditional sonnet of um, 10 syllables and the stress on the syllables is the important part which works well for me because it gives me a framework to play in. And um, this is a sonnet that I wrote, and I'm just going to read it because I like it. It's called To My Heart. In the summertime is when I met you. I am unknown all, filled in mind and heart. In my small time learned I just who thou art. Changed is my life just like my love you do. For springs did pass before that spring may too. Not yet not known, but greater than each part. My heart grown is. Now from just where I start. Known in my heart before flowers anew. Firstborn life's do, I hope of you I see. In time my life for you in strength I live. So much there is. Wish I that I could say.
Hazel, why not? You bring such hugs for me. The best of you makes me my best to give. I know may come for now. Live well this day. Seriously. We need to have people start living good days again. Because this is ridiculous. This is utterly ridiculous. Thank you.